everyone! Welcome back to DepEd TV! I am Miss DJ, your study buddy in math, and with a joyful heart and an empowered mind and spirit, learn along with me and let's be Math Galing! So now, bring out your pen and your self-learning module as we once again demystify the mathematical world of sets. In our previous episode, we discussed about a well-defined set and the elements of a set. We also learned that a set must have elements that are related to one another, and generating such a list must not lead to a difference in opinion due to the subjectivity of what elements may be included in it. We came across new terminologies such as null set, or most commonly known as an empty set, which is a set with no elements in it. When we tackled several types of relations that may exist between two or more sets, we learned about subsets and disjoint sets. Lastly, we've learned how to determine the cardinality of a set. That is why we classify sets either as finite or infinite. Remember that a set with an exact value as its representation for its cardinality is called a finite set. Any other set whose cardinality cannot be represented by a cardinal number is not finite. Are you ready for our next lesson? But before that, Take a look at this. We have two plates here. One has bananas and the other one has lemons. Let us list the similarities and the differences between these two fruits. A banana is a smooth and sweetie fruit, while a lemon is a bumpy and sour fruit. On the other hand, both of them are fruits and color yellow. This is what a Venn diagram looks like. I assure you that it will be fun learning about set operations by using the Venn diagram. To help us for today's episode, let us call on Ben, the Venn diagram. Hi, Teacher DJ. Hi, Ben. Can you tell us what a Venn diagram is? Yes, Teacher DJ. A Venn diagram like me is a tool that helps us see the similarities and differences between two sets. That's right. To further explain, let us give them a more specific example. Let's say, the universal set is the set with the numbers 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60, 70. Set A consists of all the multiples of 5 from the numbers 5 to 35. Or, set A contains the elements 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. While set B are multiples of 10, not more than 70. Question, what elements are found in set A and set B? All the elements in the universal set, except 0, are the elements found in the union of set A or set B. In symbols, this will be written as A union B contains the elements of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60, 70. The union of sets is the set that contains all objects under consideration or the set whose elements are found in set A or set B. Now, what do we call that region where the two sets intersect or overlap? Intersection? Yes, the subset containing the three elements common to both A and B is called the intersection of the two sets. In this case, we refer to it as A intersects B. In this segment, it is important to remember the two set operations that were just introduced to you today, the union and intersection of sets. We use the symbol U to denote the union of sets and inverted U to denote the intersection of sets. 
That's right, Ben. Let's give them another example, Teacher DJ. Sure. Let's say one set is a group of people who love watching TV shows and another set is a group of people who love certain TV shows as well. Let's say one set represents the group composed of Naruto, Yujin, and Sakura, and the other set that with Yujin, Sakura, Yunbin, and Sonya and Jin. We have to find the union of these sets which is the same as the set of people that are in either sets. Our answer will be people who are assigned as A, D, G, B, and C. Yes, in short, all of them. How about the set of people who watch both of this genre of shows? Um, we have to find the intersection of sets. Correct. And zooming in to where the two circles overlap, we will find that person D and person G watch both types of shows. We can also see that the cardinality of set X or Y is 5, while the cardinality of X and Y is 2, since only persons D and G are found in both X and Y. That's right, Ben. We also need to use the lowercase n to indicate the number or cardinality of set. Another related concept to set operations is finding the complement of a set. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a complement, which is a noun, is something that fills up, completes, or makes better or perfect. In mathematics, the complement of some set, say set A, is the set that contains the elements not present in A. This is denoted by the apostrophe read as prime. Thus, the notation used for the complement of A is A prime. Here, we have a burger meal set which includes a burger, fries, and a drink. While in this dessert set, we have a pie, which is not included in the burger set. Meaning, the dessert meal is a complement of the burger meal set. Now, for more detailed example, let us say that the universal set is the 26 letters of the English alphabet, while set V is the set that contains the vowels out of these 26 letters. Therefore, the complement of set V contains all the 21 consonants of the English alphabet. Ben, come out and show us how it looks in a Venn diagram. Hi again! So, using the Venn diagram, the complement of V will be illustrated by the shaded region or the area in U not included in V. Now, use this diagram to answer the questions that follow. Given, the universal set U is the set of all natural numbers from 2 to 10. A is the set of all even numbers from 2 to 10. B is the set of all prime numbers from 2 to 10. Now, what are the elements of A prime or the complement of A? How about of B prime or the complement of B? To illustrate the complement of A, we will refer to the shaded part of the rectangle as shown here. Note that we shaded the region outside the circle representing set A. If you will examine it, the shaded region in this Venn diagram also represents U minus A. A prime, therefore, represents U minus A. This means that the set A prime contains the elements 3, 5, 7, and 9. Correct! Meanwhile, to illustrate the complement of B or B prime, we will refer to the shaded part of the rectangle as shown here. In this case, we shaded the region outside the circle representing set B. Or U minus B. This means that the complement of set B is the set whose elements are 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. In set operations, Union implies adding the elements found in all the sets presented. But what about when we're subtracting elements between two sets? That is where we begin discussing another operation included in today's lessons. Let us now find the difference of two sets. 
principle, the difference of set A and B, written as A minus B, is a set of elements in A that are not in B. Let's say A and B are both subsets of U. A is the set of natural numbers from 1 to 4, while B is the set of natural numbers from 3 to 6. So, we define difference of sets A and B denoted by A minus B as the set of all elements in A that are not in B. Thus, A minus B contains the elements 1 and 2. To check that you have completely learned this set operation, find the indicated difference in each of the following. If the elements of set A are 1, 2, and 3, while the elements of set B are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, find A minus B and B minus A. Since the elements of A that are not in B is just the number 3, then set difference A minus B contains the element 3. Then again, to find the set difference B minus A, we just consider the elements in B that are not in A. Therefore, B minus A contains the elements 4, 5, and 6. For our next example, we are given set A which consists of elements Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, while set B consists of the elements Saturday and Sunday. We notice that A and B are disjoint sets. Again, what are disjoint sets? Great! Two sets are disjoint if their intersection results in the null set. Set A is the set of weekdays. Set B is the set of weekends. Therefore, A minus B is still equal to A, while B minus A is still equal to B. practice the skill in doing all these set operations. Here is another activity that allows you to apply what you've learned about the operation on sets. Write your answer on a piece of paper. The elements that are found in either A or B are the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. Thus, the union of sets A and B are the elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. While the intersection of the two sets of the elements that these sets have in common are A and C. Therefore, A intersection B is equal to A and C. Now, we have seen from the Venn diagrams that sets A and B are not disjoint. So, set A minus B will form another set that is a proper subset of A. This only means that the set difference A minus B is equal to the three remaining elements in set A after removing their intersection. Or, set A minus set B contains the elements B, D, and E. Now, we have here some school supplies to further illustrate set operations. Let X be the set containing a ball pen, crayon, marker, and pencil, while set Y contains a pencil and ball pen, and set Z contains a crayon. 
Based on the list, we note that y is a proper subset of x. z is also a proper subset of x. y contains the elements pencil and ball pen, while z contains the element crayon. Now, can we find the value of x union y? To help us, let us call on our friend Ben. Once again, Ben? Teacher DJ, I'm here! Can you help us find x union y? Sure, Teacher DJ. In this case, x is the universal set since the elements of the other two sets, y and z, are also found in this set. That is why x is the outermost circle in the Venn diagram. Exactly! Therefore, x union y has all the elements pencil, ball pen, pencil pen, and crayon. The question now is, what is x minus y? The context that x is the superset of y, what we are looking for in this case are all the elements not found in y, or also known as the complement of y. Mm. The answer will be the shaded region of the circle representing the superset x, which includes the remaining two school supplies, crayons and pencil pen. That is correct, Ben. The set difference of x and y, or the answer to the question x minus y, includes the elements crayons and a pencil pen. It's your turn! But first, let's say goodbye to our friend Ben. Bye, Ben! Bye, Teacher DJ! Let us try another one, this time with the aid of an illustration using the Venn diagram. Given, set R is the set of letters between A to J. Thus, we have set R equals B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. Set S is the set of vowels of the English alphabet. So, the letters which are contained in set S are A, E, I, O, U. T is the set of letters from A to E. Thus, set T contains A, B, C, D, and E. We are given for this exercise sets R, S, and T, which are all joint sets. This is because they have one or more common elements with respect to the remaining sets. Now, find R union S. To find the union of these sets, we identify the set of elements that are members of R, or members of S, or members of both R and S. As shown in the diagram, all the letters listed are found in the circle for set R, or the circle for set S, or the intersection of the circles representing sets R and S. Thus, set R union set S contains A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, O and U. What is our intersection S? To find the intersection of these two sets, we identify from the Venn diagram the regions where the circles representing sets R and S overlap or intersect. Thus, our intersection S is the set which contains the elements E and I. This time, let us find the set difference of set T and set S. This region, shaded with color green, represents T minus S. Therefore, the final answer to T minus S is the set which contains B, C, and D. And the last question, find R intersection S intersection T. How are we going to interpret this phrase? What does it mean when we are asked to find the intersection of the three sets? Very good! We simply find the region where the three circles overlap. Thus, using again our diagram, the only element common to all these three, or to sets R, S, and T, is the element E. Thus, R intersection S intersection T is the set containing the element E. At this point, we will have additional activities as an assessment of what you have learned about this lesson on set operations. Herein, sit, sit, sit in a minute. Given this diagram, can you try answering the following in just a minute? 
timer. First, find A union B. Second, find A minus C. Third, find the union of sets A and B intersection set C. Check your answer in today's short assessment. What is A union B? Great! It is the set which contains the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. What is A minus C? Nice work! It is the set which contains the elements 2, 3, and 4. What is the union of set A and set B intersection set C? Perfect! It is the set whose elements are 5, 7, and 8. These concepts related to union, intersection of set, and set difference are easy to comprehend if you take time and give each concept a thorough examination. I hope you gave particular attention to the last few examples that utilize the Venn diagram because it is going to come in handy when we discuss problems involving sets in our upcoming episodes. I am delighted to be with you today. I urge you to share what you have learned in this episode and see the infinite possibilities when we find joy in learning. Again, this is Miss DJ. I wish you all a blessed day and I hope to see you again here in Math Galing! Kita Kits!